Well, it has been a crazy last week in Mariners land. I am sorry I've been a bit MIA on the YouTube channel for the past 10 or so days, but I'm going to be consistent from now on, and I have a lot of content coming for you guys. My name is Jake from Raise the Trident. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new, subscribe. It helps me out a lot, and it's free. But today, I want to do a series preview for another really important series that we're about to partake in starting tonight for this whole week weekend against the Texas Rangers. We're going to be hosting them for three games in T-Mobile Park. But before I get into the series preview, I really want to talk about this last week because it's been absolutely insane. It's taken years off my life. It started with a three-game set in Kansas City in Kauffman. I, we have a really rough time every time we go there. We only took one game out of that series, which was really unfortunate. In game one, squandered an eight run lead to lose and got walked off. That did not feel great. And in general, Kansas City was Kansas City. They are absolute juggernauts when playing at home. And we felt that. Our pitching just really couldn't prevent runs going across the plate because our offense scored 19 runs, plenty. We should have been fine. We should have taken two or three if you score 19 runs. And last night we finished a four game stretch against the Chicago White Sox, who are one of the worst teams in baseball this year. And every game was very close, which it shouldn't be. However, we still took three of four, which is ultimately what you needed to do and wins are wins regardless of how they come. In game one, we battled back from 4-0 in the seventh inning. Cal Raleigh hit the best walk-off probably so far this year with a walk-off grand slam. In game two, Cal Raleigh continued to be the hero, hit a really clutch two-run double in the seventh to take the lead, which we held on to. And in game three, both sides could not score any runs. It was 1-1 going into extra innings, but maybe Mitch Hanniger would get a nice blooper into right field that scored Luke Rayleigh from second, and we walked that off as well. So basically in the last week between Kansas City and the White Sox, two Mariners walk-offs, one walk-off against us, and three of those games went to extra innings. So the boys have really had to work for some of these Ws. But going into it, Tonight, on Friday night, Apple TV, we're going to be in the City Connects. It's going to be vibes. The first game of a three-game set against the Texas Rangers, who are behind us in the AL West by five and a half games. It's going to be really important in my eyes to take two of three in this series. That would put us up four to two in the head-to-head, -head, and we gain a little bit of ground on them in the standings. And thankfully, I do think the pitching matchup is in our favor. We did some roster maneuvering during the White Sox series that saw Jonathan Diaz and Emerson Hancock both get starts and that pushed Brian Wu back but also pushed the general rotation back as well. So now instead of getting Kirby, Gilbert, and Wu, we're going to have Castillo, Kirby, and Gilbert, our big three, which sets us up for the best possible chances of success for this series that is really important. Once again, in game one, we have Luis Castillo starting. He's been pretty good since his first few starts of the season. His last start was not as good against Kansas City. He did give up five earned runs in five innings. So it's gonna be really important for him to have a nice bounce back start against the Rangers. He did face them earlier on this year on April 25th, where he went six innings and only gave up two runs. So that paired with his opposition being Andrew Heaney, who currently has a two two and seven record and a 4.06 ERA. We know Andrew Heaney a bit. We faced him plenty of times. He's not overpowering by any means. His average fastball is about 91 miles an hour. His breaking stuff has simply just not been good this year. So in my opinion, the offense is going to have to be really aggressive against Heaney, try to knock him out of the game as quick as possible. Although the Texas Rangers bullpen is not as bad as it was last year, it's still not great. And this team has shown time and time again that on the offensive side, they will score runs against bullpens. Plain and simple, they seem to prefer to get all their runs off the bullpen instead of starting pitchers. So in game one, once again, Luis Castillo versus Andrew Heaney, feeling pretty good about that matchup. Game two is really gonna be the one to watch. We have George Kirby versus Nathan Eovaldi. The last three outings for George Kirby have been phenomenal. He's only allowed four earned runs in the last three starts. And in general, lifetime, George likes pitching against the Rangers. Apparently he has a 1.26 ERA again 
against them. And the last four times he's faced them, he has gotten the W. However, he has not faced them yet this year. And it's going to be a hard outing for George Kirby because on the other side of the bump, he's going to have Nathan Eovaldi, who currently has a 3-2 and record and 2.68 ERA on the season. You could probably argue that the Rangers have the pitching advantage for game two. So really, it's going to take Kirby throwing an absolute gem and just keep us in it. That should be the game plan. As for Eovaldi, he's going to be the hardest pitcher we face this weekend. His fastball and his split finger are his best pitches, and I would imagine he's going to be pretty heavy on them against us, especially since Garrett Crochet could throw like 70 fastballs and felt like we could not hit a single one. But in game three, I feel like we have the pitching matchup once again. We have Logan Gilbert starting game three for us. He's been really up and down recently. He's kind of had good start, bad start, good start, bad start. He did start in game one against the White Sox where he went 6.2 innings pitched and gave up three earned runs, which is a quality start. So we're going to need him to keep that going, have another quality outing on Sunday. And on the other side, we're facing Dane Dunning for game three, who has a 4-5 record, a 4.23 ERA at this point. If you look at Savant page, it is very blue right now. So realistically, we just need to really jump on him. Kind of the same thing as Andrew Heaney. Just be really aggressive. Try to get him out of the game as soon as possible. It's going to be a little bit tough because obviously on our Sunday day games is usually when we're trotting out kind of our B lineup. Usually Cal Raleigh's getting the day off catching, but that might be Mitch Garver this time. Who knows? So hopefully our offense really can pick up our pitchers in this series. They're really going to need to because they had two really good series against the Angels and Kansas City. They scored like 19 runs in both series, which is what you like to see there. However, in against the White Sox, they just couldn't really get much going. They did score eight runs in game one. However, four of those came off of Cal Raleigh's walk-off homer. So, eh. so coming off of this very poor series against the White Sox, we need them to get their mojo back against the Rangers because once again, we all know how important this series is. They know how important this series is. We're going to need prime Julio. We're going to need prime JP. We're going to need all of them to step up. Some notable mentions for the Texas injury list because Texas Rangers were really beat up when we faced them earlier on in the season. And although that is still generally true, they do have a couple notable people back, namely Corey Seager, their star shortstop. He did get scratched from game three against the Dodgers just last night, but that was mainly a precautionary thing they want him to be ready for this weekend so i'd imagine we're gonna see him in at least one game hopefully only just one game and if he's in the lineup of course we all know how dangerous he can be josh jung is still gonna be on the il hopefully i'm saying that in the last name right i don't know if it's young or jung and one of their main relief pitchers josh sabors <laughs> i don't know how to say that either is also on the injury list so that's a bit of a blow to their bullpen and the last person to note on their injury list is evan carter their left fielder he is still on on the injured list. I don't think he's going to be back for this series either. So mainly Seager is going to be back. We didn't see him at all in the first series of the year and the end of April. So obviously that's going to be a bit of an adjustment, but I trust our pitching to get the job done. Now our bullpen is very thin as we all know. Andres Munoz is currently day to day. He did pitch last night against the White Sox. So I would be surprised if he doesn't have the day off today at least. So it's going to be really important that our starting pitching get some innings, eat some innings, and keeps us in the game every single time, which we have our big three on the mound. So I'm feeling pretty confident, but I'd love to know how do you think we're gonna do against the Texas Rangers? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Once again, if you are new to the channel, it's free to subscribe and it helps me out a lot. You also like this video as well. Once again, this series kicks off tonight on Apple TV. I'll be watching. I know you will be. That's gonna be it for me in this one and I will see you in the next.